Got him. Welcome to this video showing the first fire going in and the first running of the seven and a quarter inch gauge Duke of Gloucester that we've been rebuilding at the steam workshop for the past four years. Do you want a hand over this bit? At this stage, the chassis has been air tested in our workshop. So we've put an airline onto just the chassis part to make sure that everything works as it should, the valves work as they should. Um, but there's a big difference between that and actually running it on steam. So here you can see, this is the pipe with a rubber hose on the bottom just to get water into the boiler ready for lighting up. Moving around the, the finished locomotive, um, you can see that Ron is getting the grate sections out for the fire. You can see it's quite a large grate area for a miniature locomotive, um, and it goes in through the fire hall door. Here, Ron is wrapping a little piece of string around the metal bar holding the grates together, and then hooks it with a special tool so that he can poke it in through the fire hall door, drop it onto the two bars, one at the front, one at the back, and then pull the string out. And then Ron will put the poker in just to push the grate to the left, up against the left-hand side of the firebox, allowing for him to continue putting the next section in, and so on right the way through until all four sections of grate are in the firebox. The next stage is to connect an air line with the plastic hose here onto the front. We have a little valve to connect it into the steam locomotive's actual blower mm -hmm. system. And that allows us to force a jet of air up the chimney, and then John can light the charcoal for the very first fire charcoal lit. There's already a bed of charcoal been put into the firebox itself so that John's lit piece there will light the fire that's in there already, light the charcoal that's in there already, and the forced air that we've just drafted up the chimney will pull that forward and through the tubes. That's why the smoke isn't pouring out through the firehole door into the cab at the moment. It's being pulled the right way and blasted up the chimney by the forced air induction. John just making a phone call to his dad to make sure the coal's in the right end. Um, here is the coal, anthracite beans. Um, there's a good bed of charcoal burning there now, uh, which means we can put the higher temperature, harder, smokeless coal on there, which is anthracite beans. We use that because any tarry, smoky coal tends to fur up the little tubes in the boiler and it doesn't steam as well. About 45 minutes into the process now, we have 30 pounds per square inch of steam pressure on the gauge there, which means the water's boiling, the fire is really hot, anthracite's burning thoroughly, so we're, we're not far off being properly in steam now. And full pressure now, the safety valves are blowing off. That's about 90 pounds per square inch. Blow the whistle again. So here we go with John opening the regulator for the first attempt to move it. A little bit of steam through the cylinders first to warm them up to try and get rid of the condensate. And we have success. We actually had a minor problem here. There's steam drain operated out. drain cocks on the locomotive, which ideally we would have had open at this point. But we found that because we're on the rolling road and there's no load behind the engine, the pressure in the pistons, in, in the cylinders, was never getting high enough to knock those um, steam operated drain cocks open. So we've since put springs in there to help them open, um, even under light loads. You can see um, John operating the valve on the side of the firebox there, which is what that noise was. Um, we've simulated that here by with the brake block that you saw there. If John operates the steam brake, you'll then look at the brake block and you'll see the steam brake moves onto the wheel. That creates a resistance in the wheel and simulates effectively a load. So now the pressure in the cylinders goes right up and the steam drain cocks opened. The full-size prototype that this is a model of, the Duke of Gloucester, was essentially an experimental locomotive with rotating cam shaft valve gear, capotti valve gear. Uh, much more complicated than Walsh Arts or Stevenson's or any of the more common valve gears, but allowing for full pressure to be injected into the cylinder. 
Um, if you look inside that valve chest, I uh, cut here to an earlier video that we did before the boiler was back on, you can see the complex series of cams and followers that drive the poppet valves that you can see here going up and down. And inside there, that opens a couple of cages to admit full pressure into the front and back of the cylinder. Following the rotating prop shaft forward through a 90 degree gearbox, you can see the valve chest above the third middle cylinder there as well. Um, Cabrotti valve gear allowed for increases in performance, power and efficiency, but it came too late really as, as the fitters were used to working with Walshart's valve gear and Stevenson's valve gear and steam was toward the end of its life so it never really got the chance to get developed into the success that it could have been. Um, here you can see the locomotive is priming, there's quite a lot of water coming out of there. That's purely because this is a brand new boiler on the locomotive and therefore all the salts and solder and muck in the boiler from the, from the construction process causes a froth which is easily lifted by the regulator and pushed out through the chimney. Our remit here was to build a model with super details on it. So here you see one of the oil pots for the valve gear. Um, everything works. Um, this is a little lubricator with a little window in it that you can see there, one of the two um, mechanical lubricators for steam oil. Here you can see John's operated the water valve and now the steam valve on the injector. So that's the injector working properly. There's also a larger exhaust injector here as well. And there you can see John's turned the water on Ooh, and the steam fine. on and that sucks it up and injects as well. So both of the injectors are working nicely on this first test. Um, on this side we have um, a small ejector and a large ejector which effectively blows a jet of steam through a venturi on the side of the smoke box and up the chimney and through this venturi you can see we've got a little leak on it at the moment. It pulls a vacuum and that vacuum registers on a gauge in the foot plate and when John operates the vacuum brake it goes to zero and the brakes come on on the tender and on the train. Therefore, that's plumbed through the tender, and you can see if we put a gauge on the vacuum pipes on the back of the tender as well, you can see that the same vacuum's translated there to go into the carriages. Yep. When John operates the brake, the brake goes down to zero, and, yep. and the springs pull the brakes on on the train. The brief on this rebuild here at the steam workshop was to be as accurate and faithful as we could to the original works drawings or the early reference photographs that we could find, and that's what John's done. Um, so a little guided tour here of some of the details. This is a slacking pipe which was used for blowing steam and hot water over the coal dust to keep the dust down and it obviously works. That's the drain cock lever which also works. They're steam operated drain cocks as you saw earlier. The wind deflector moves like the real one. The windows slide exactly the same as the full size and the detail there has been actually hand painted by John to simulate the pins, the brackets and, and the wood grain. Um, the fireman's armrest um, is functional just like on the real thing, same on the driver's side. Um, the windows on the front of the cab have the correct latches and springs and open um, exactly as the full size does. Moving on to some of the controls now, the water valves for the injectors. There's a left hand and a right hand one. And if we look below the running boards, you can see that one goes down into a linkage that just moves the mechanism slightly forwards to the right hand water valve. And the other one transfers it across the rear of the locomotive to the left hand water valve. And um, quite a satisfying little linkage there. Winding the damper control, um, you can follow through to see it moves the levers and transfers the movement down to the front of the ash pan where the damper door opens. Reversing the direction you wind the handle, if we move to the other side of the firebox, you can see that the other door shuts as well. Both operate opening, shutting together. Um, if you look now at the actual ash pan, this drops the doors on the bottom of the ash pan. So John's released the latches and then dropped the handles. And if he reverses it, you can see the doors underneath the ash pan closing. There's three doors on the front and three doors on the back. So six doors in total to drop the ash out at the end of the day. As John here winds the reverser, you can see it's showing the different degrees of cutoff on the indicator scale, just like the real thing. The vacuum brake handle that we've seen operated before, the details were etched on in-house with our laser etcher. And also on that pedestal is the blower valve with the Gresham and Craven hand wheel at the top and the steam sanders with the wooden handle below it. As per the prototype, the sandbox lids are chained on. Uh, and if we look underneath the running board, the sandbox is there too. Um, and the steam sander is directly underneath it with the copper pipe supplying the steam and the black pipe supplying the sand under the wheels. Moving on from the safety valves on the top of the boiler to the front of the locomotive, there's little inspection cover to get oil into the cam box on the front and the inside middle cylinder. And then going inside the smoke box, um, you can see that they're not just simple blast pipes, 
It's got Lempur nozzles, eight in total, to direct the jets of steam efficiently up the Venturis. The vacuum ejector on the side of the smoke box that's been chemically blackened, um, we saw that working earlier in the video. And now just a general walking tour of the locomotive so that you can see some of the detail, the grease pots, the oil rings, drain cock valve, general idea of the level of detail that we've created. Of course, the tender is not without its detail and complexity too, so a quick look here is worthwhile as well. Um, the doors for the foot plate have a clip to hold them back. They're fully working just like the real thing on hinges and they fold. Um, all the cupboards on the foot plate of the tender open. The little lever that you can see here is for the steam coal pusher, which operates a rod down the channel inside the side of the tender. That's the steam coal pusher. On this, it's actually a dummy. Um, because the driver has to sit in there, as you'll see in a moment. Um, that's the water gauge to show how much water is inside the tank on a float. Um, the coal space is accessible by flicking the latches, just like on the real thing, and then that hinges and folds out. Um, again, all the other cupboards are, are real, um, just like the real thing. If we push them back out of the way, that's the handle for the coal, for the water scoop which works as you'd expect so winding that down drops the water scoop into the water trough which of course doesn't exist in seven and a quarter but the the thought's there and as the balance weight drops on the right hand side this is reversing the process to help lift the water scoop out of the trough and the timkin axle boxes have the little retention chains the water filter box is reproduced faithfully and fully functional and there's some more little grease pots and oil runs and the tender has a little trick up its sleeve john here pushing the steam coal pusher mechanism up which releases that portion to be removable leaving a flat portion the front of the tender drops out and then you can put in its place a folded steel box which protects um, the tender from the coal which of course you're going to need to actually run it at the back where you've now got a flat section we can put in the support for the seat and um, which john's doing here which will be ultimately fastened to the cushion which has been made and sits on top and of course footrest so the driver doesn't have to drag his feet in the ballast. It's certainly a credit to Dennis Evans who built the locomotive in the first place and John here, our chief engineer at the Steam Workshop, whose work over the past four years has turned it into the beautifully detailed masterpiece that I think it now is. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll leave you now with just some more footage of the loco running on its first test steam.